I don't know if you've ever experienced this, but I have. And that is, we experience something when we're a child, and we say to ourselves, you know, when I'll become an adult, I'll never do it. But we actually do. I can recall so many times when I was a child, people would ask me, they would say, Yankee, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I'm thinking to myself, I don't know what I'm going to do in the next five minutes. How do I know what I'm going to be when I grow up? And now that I'm an adult, very often I'll ask a child, so tell me, what would you like to be when you grow up? And now that I'm an adult and a parent, we have hope and we have aspirations who we would like our children grow up to be and who they should emulate. As Jews, hopefully, it is great figures of the Torah, of the Bible, that we hope our children would want to follow in their footsteps. There's this beautiful custom that many communities have. Every Friday night, the father of the household will gather his children around and he will give them a blessing. His daughters he will bless that they should grow to be like Sarah, Rivka, Rachel, and Leah. But when it comes to our boys, I wonder if you know who we actually hope that our boys should emulate. Who should be their superheroes? I'm sure many of you are thinking, well, if we bless the girls to be like the mothers, then we should bless the boys to be like the fathers, Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. Or others may suggest, well, what about Moses? Moshe, he was the greatest leader of the Jewish people. And perhaps some may say, well, King David is not a bad choice. It is in this week's portion, Parshish Miketz, that we read of the birth of two young men, two sons of Joseph. Joseph, as we know, had been sold into slavery. He ultimately becomes second in charge of Egypt. He becomes a very, very powerful man. And his two sons are Manasseh and Ephraim. And it is those two boys who we bless our sons that they should emulate. And the question is obvious. Why Manasseh and Ephraim? Most of us, I'm sure, have not even heard of these names before. I doubt that they would make the top ten list of great biblical figures. You know, tragically, if you look through the book of Bereshit of Genesis, one striking common theme is found throughout, and that is sibling rivalry. Right at the very beginning, Cain kills his brother Hevel. Yitzchak and Yishmol don't get on. Esau wants to kill his brother Yaakov. And even the twelve tribes, all Tzadikim, they sell Joseph into captivity. The very first time that we have a situation where brothers get along, where they show love and compassion for each other, is Manasseh and Ephraim. That is demonstrated when their grandfather, Yaakov, blesses them. But rather than blessing Manasseh, who was the older one first, he blesses Ephraim, and then he blesses Manasseh. And Manasseh has no ill feeling and no malice towards his younger brother. And that is why we bless our sons to be like Manasseh and Ephraim, because we would want our children to get along with each other. There is another very beautiful reason that is offered, one that I think is truly relevant to the world that we live in today, and especially if you're an only child. Throughout our lengthy exile, more often than not, we have had to live the ghetto experience, cut off from the rest of society. It is really only in modern times that we, the Jewish people, have been able to take our rightful place as citizens of the world. The world of academia, the world of science, of finance, of politics, are accessible to every single Jew even to those that are most visibly observant. As we become exposed to the trappings of Western civilization, we may become intoxicated with that what it has to offer. And at times we may forget our core values, our tradition and our history. The great male biblical figures, more often than not, lived amongst their own people, cut off from the rest of the world. The exception to that was Manasseh and Ephraim. You see, Manasseh and Ephraim didn't have Zayda Yaakov's home to go to on a Friday night. 
They couldn't spend time with their uncles and aunts and all of their cousins who led a similar lifestyle. They only had Yosef. And more often than not, their father was in the palace of Pharaoh. And still, Menashe and Ephraim were able to remain focused, were able to remain connected to their tradition, to their upbringing and their faith to the extent that they were considered to be on par with the other 12 tribes. And therefore we bless our sons as they go out to the world and become part of it and experience all that the world has to offer. May God bestow upon them the blessing similar to that of Menashe and Ephraim, that they should main, remain focused, they should remain connected, and they should remain resolute in their belief of our tradition, our faith, and our heritage.